with News 4 San Antonio at 5. We're here for you. Thank you for joining us for News 4 San Antonio at 5. I'm Simone D'Alba. And I'm Robert Price. We start tonight with breaking news from the city's southwest side, where police confirm an elderly man has been mauled to death by a pack of dogs running loose through a neighborhood. Multiple people have been taken to the hospital with injuries, including an elderly woman also attacked. News 4 San Antonio's Jordan Elder is standing by live near Couples Road, where this tragic scene has unfolded. Jordan. It's just a horrific scene out here. Now we're told firefighters were fighting off these dogs with pickaxes, just trying to get to the people involved. Like you said, an 80 year old man was killed and multiple other people were taken to the hospital. Now neighbors tell us these people were just here visiting. When they got out of their car, that's when the dogs came running. A firefighter was actually bit in the process trying to save these people, but we're told he is okay. Another person was bit in the hand. There were at least two dogs involved in this mauling, and a third was out in the street as well. All of those dogs have been taken into ACS custody. ACS tells us these same dogs were involved in a biting incident two years ago, but at the time, they weren't deemed dangerous. They were quarantined and then returned to their owners. Uh, by state law, unless there is an affidavit or a severe bodily injury case or something like that, again, those, those bites were mild. Uh, so those animals finished their state required quarantine and uh, the owner paid, paid reclaim fees and by state law we were required to return those animals. Officials say their owners could face charges over this, but there's no word yet on what those charges might be. Now, neighbors tell us they have been calling about these dogs for years now and that this was their worst fear. Now, there was only that one report made, but they say this is why they kept calling. They were extremely concerned that exactly what happened here this afternoon was going to happen, and sadly, tonight it has. Reporting live on the southwest side, I'm Jordan Elder, News 4 San Antonio. Family members were visibly emotional today as they set up this memorial for their father and grandfather killed in a dog attack on Friday. Neighbors in the area tell us they've been calling the city about this for months and even years. City records back that up. It's really frustrating and that this man had to pay his life for that, you know, on account of the city not taking action. This is Belinda Rodriguez. She says she's called the city more than a dozen times about the dogs involved in Friday's mauling. Officials with Animal Care Services confirm the dogs were also involved in two other biting cases, as well as several other reports. All three dogs involved in the mauling have been euthanized. We combed through 311 records and found that many of these cases are still open. Some of those cases, uh, either we've had an officer out and there's an open investigation that continues, uh, and, and then others of those that have been dispatched have not had an officer to the location yet. ACS Director Shannon Sims says you have to complete an affidavit in order to move forward with significant bite investigations. When we seek that affidavit, what we find is a lot of times folks are either afraid of their neighbor, they don't want to stir up drama within their neighborhood, and so they decline to to, to fill out the actual affidavit to initiate that process. For people taking a walk or spending time outside with their families, this information is crucial. We actually met all of these little guys as we were out reporting on this story today. We have spent months making sure you are able to access where these registered dangerous dogs live. And this is something the public has been asking for. <laughs> There's nobody there to help us. Betty Tarver tells us she's no stranger to aggressive dogs near her east side home. We can't walk in our neighborhood anymore. But until she spoke with us, she had no idea some of those dogs were classified as dangerous. According to state law, to be considered dangerous, that means a dog made an unprovoked attack outside their enclosure or property and caused serious injury or there's a reasonable belief that they could seriously injure someone if they got loose. We have kids all up and down the block, you know, and when they corner one of them, who's going to be there to take care of them? Nobody. The city of San Antonio told me back in April that the addresses for dangerous dogs were confidential. They sent this letter to the attorney general asking to withhold the information. But months later, the AG ruled in News 4's favor, ordering the city to tell us where these dogs live and how many are at each house. Transparency advocate Adam Angievsky says we scored a win for transparency and for your safety. Taxpayers paid for the creation of that database. Taxpayers own that database. And now, thanks to your efforts, the community at large would be able to get to review what's in that database. When we finally got the addresses, we plotted them all out on this map, revealing there are several neighborhoods in the city that have multiple dangerous dog registries. Well, there should be some kind of notice 
that, that there's vicious dogs in a neighborhood. So yeah, I think they should find some kind of way, if not over the internet or something. That's how the city of Austin does it. Their website has the names, addresses, even phone numbers of all the registered dangerous dogs and owners listed out for the public to see. But the city of San Antonio does not. Has San Antonio considered something like that? There's questions as to the legality of me posting an individual's personal information, personally identifiable information publicly without a conviction. Do you think the city is transparent enough about where all the dangerous dogs are in San Antonio? I mean, everything is available via open records. Uh, we have explored some, some potential solutions uh, similar to, you know, uh, child pedophilia and things like that, being able to have a website that shows where these dogs are. Sim says the technology is likely available to keep an online database updated, but the legal questions are the hold up right now. Why would the city ever want to protect the locations and identities of the vicious and dangerous dogs in the city? Because we were able to get this information, we're posting it on our website for you and your family to see. But keep in mind, this registry can change day to day. Families might give up their dogs or a new registration might be filed. Our commitment to you is that we will keep this map updated. And if the city ever does decide to post this information, we'll let you know. For the News 4 I team, I'm Jordan Elder. If you'd like to see where dangerous dogs are in San Antonio, like Jordan mentioned, just head to news4sa.com and you will find this story at the top of the page right now. We created this map so that you could see if there were dangerous dogs in your neighborhood. And you might have noticed several of these addresses have more than one dangerous dog living there. As of November 1st, two homes had three dangerous dogs and several more had two. When we noticed this trend, we took our questions to Animal Care Services. How is that something that is allowed to happen that where you have multiple in one home so state law does not regulate the number of dangerous dogs you're allowed to have uh, now by city ordinance we've restricted the number of animals that you can have without a permit to five that means each address could have up to five dangerous dogs according to city and state rules as long as those individuals remain in compliance with the dangerous dog statutes uh, there's really not a mechanism to remove those animals uh, they just have to stay into compliance. That means the dogs have to wear a special collar, have a secure enclosure, and more. And the owners must get liability insurance, have a warning sign posted, and get annual inspections. There's nothing in state law right now that allows me to petition the court system to say, this individual should not own animals anymore. And, and that's something that I think that should be considered legislatively, much like with the cruelty laws. The Texas Code of Criminal Procedure says if you're convicted of cruelty on livestock, a court can bar you from owning animals. Sim says this is something he's brought up to city leaders as they work on dangerous dog legislation. Animal Care Services told us they've discussed having an online resource for you to track where dangerous dogs are living, but they say there's legal questions surrounding what information they can put out there. Here's a look at how other Texas cities and counties have done it. We've shown you the city of Austin's method, listing out the dangerous dog owners, names, addresses, even phone numbers. Dallas does something similar, but they include photos of the dogs. Harris County has an interactive map you can use, and so does Fort Bend County. I reached out to all 10 of our city council members in San Antonio to ask if they'd support something like this for you to use. Leaders in District 3 and District 10 tell me they'd like to explore the idea. It's just a matter of uh, when we can get it done and how should we do it. Councilman Mark White says the question of privacy has to be balanced with the need for public safety. Right, you have kids walk into bus stops, walk into school, and um, parents and, and really all of our citizens need to know um, where these potentially dangerous animals are. Also developing now another dog attack. This one, an owner was injured and shot and killed his own dog. The call came in around nine this morning. Animal Care Services says the dog was triggered when the owner was trying to swat away a bug. The dog bit the owner's arm and leg. He was hospitalized for his injuries. ACS put an official notice at the owner's door requesting to speak with him immediately. This is the latest example of issues the city continues grappling with. We brought you this resource, a map showing where dangerous dogs are located and how many are at each home. But right now, the city does not have a map or database like this for you to see where dangerous dogs are. The I-Team's Jordan Elder has spent weeks asking the city why that is. She joins us now with an update.
Most council members I've spoken to say this is something they would support. It's just a matter of logistics and legalities. We spoke with Melissa Cabello Haverda, who runs the Public Safety Committee. She says privacy is important, but having a resource for people to check on dangerous dog locations could have an impact. If it were to prevent one of these maulings that have happened or prevent a future mauling, I think it's worth it. I mean, we have to gauge that. When we spoke to ACS about the idea, they told us they're working with the legal department to figure out what and how much they'd be able to post publicly. They said there could be concerns with privacy, especially posting the addresses. Cabello Haverda says that could increase accountability. Also, I think it puts the owner a little bit on notice, right? If you're on that registry, if your your dog is on that registry, I would be a little, you know, a little more cautious. I'd be worried about my dog getting out or causing any, you know, damage or injury to people. Because not everyone has access to the internet. Cabello Haverda says they could print out the registry and put it at each council field office or they could put it right here at City Hall. She says this is something she'd like to discuss with ACS at a public safety committee meeting. For the News 4 I-Team, I'm Jordan Elder. The I-Team has been asking city leaders for weeks if they'll consider a resource like that map. Jordan Elder joins us now with an update. Almost three weeks after we brought you a map of where dangerous dogs are located in San Antonio, we're learning that the city might release one of their own. Several viewers reached out to the I-Team asking why a resource like this didn't exist. Residents told us earlier this month that it's a matter of public safety. There should be some kind of notice that, that there's vicious dogs in a neighborhood. I think they should find some kind of way if not over the internet or something. We asked every single city council member about their thoughts on the city launching a resource like this. Half of them told us it was something they'd like to explore. It's something that from a public safety perspective, that the city needs to be looking at. I inherently think this is a great idea and I look forward to seeing it come to life. I think it's a great idea. I think it's part of a bigger solution though. District 7 Councilwoman Marina Alderete Gavito tells us she met with ACS about this this week and she says it's coming soon. The first iteration of it might just be a list of addresses um, where dangerous dogs are and maybe a count of the dangerous dogs but you know, the city wants to iterate upon that and eventually it would be nice if it's in a map graphical, you know, GIS form. ACS has not yet confirmed the launch of this map, telling me they're still working with their legal department about what they can and can't do here. But as you heard the councilwoman say, this resource could launch as soon as next week. Reporting at City Hall, I'm Jordan Elder. The I-Team's Jordan Elder has been following the dangerous dog situation in our city since the beginning. And thanks to her relentless reporting, the city has now launched its own map pinpointing dangerous dogs in our area. This comes three weeks after the I-Team originally launched our resource for you to help find where dangerous dogs live. Since then, we've been pressing the city for answers about why they didn't have a resource like that as well. Today, they launched one. It's got all of the addresses of the uh, dangerous dogs. The long awaited dangerous dog map hit computer screens on Friday. It comes three weeks after the I team released this map. The attorney general ruled the city had to give us the addresses of dangerous dogs and we turned them into a resource for you. Then we pressed the city on why they didn't have something like this. Animal care services told us there were privacy and legal concerns. Because dangerous dog is not an actual animal conviction. It's not a criminal conviction. Uh, it was kind of deemed at the time that, you know, we don't want to put somebody's information out there that hasn't had a criminal conviction in court. But this was something you were asking for. People wanted this map to be aware of dangerous dogs and make decisions about their family's safety. After our map launched, News 4 got several messages like this. When community, community is asking for something and it's a pretty uh, compelling voice, then we have to do it as quickly as possible. When we talked to leaders after our original story aired, they said a dangerous dog registry could take a while. Um, I would tell you that probably in the next uh, six months. The city map was actually released two weeks later. Every day that we don't have these tools in place is another day another person could get hurt. In their press release, ACS cited a recent attorney general ruling that paved the way for this release. You might remember that the AG ruled in our favor earlier this year after the city denied our request for dangerous dog addresses. That process of getting the approval through the Texas State AG is kind of the, the, the catalyst that allowed us to move forward with this. Gotcha. Was it the request that we put in for the addresses? It was, it, I can just say that it was, it was a request that we had. Okay. Transparency advocate Adam Angievsky says that's a win.
public records should be posted publicly. They shouldn't be hidden behind sunshine requests in a battle all the way to the attorney general's office. This was good for transparency, and it is a win for News 4 I-Team journalism. Now that the city has launched this map, Sims tells me they're going to keep expanding it. What else are you hoping to do in the future? Uh, one of the definite things that we want to do is pictures of the animals, uh, because knowing that a dangerous dog lives on your block is one thing. Knowing what that animal looks like so you can identify it, that's much more impactful. Sims and city council members acknowledge that this registry isn't the sole solution. They're hiring more ACS officers, increasing the number of dangerous dog investigators, and working to improve response times. We need to make it as difficult as possible on uh, the folks that have proven themselves to be irresponsible. Here's why this matters. Officials say this may not stop dog attacks, but it will raise awareness. If you see a dog that's listed on this registry and it's not in compliance, you could call ACS and the city is encouraging you to do that. Officials say this is a step toward owner accountability and public safety and that many more steps are coming in the future. For the News 4i team, I'm Jordan Elder.